Hi, I'm Corey Hawkins and welcome to video number two of the new gardener's guide to making plans. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hopefully you watched video one and you've had a chance to um, evaluate your motivations and maybe set some goals as well as take a look at what kind of resources you have available to you as far as growing space is concerned. Today we're going to talk about seed packets and how to read them. By being able to read a seed packet, it's going to answer the questions of how much space do I need to grow? When do I need to plant things? And how long will it take to harvest them? Good seed packets will also include information about fertilization and some seed specs, like how long you can keep your seeds and um, what the germination rate is. So let's get to it. First, let's talk about where do you buy seeds and what seed companies are good. The seed companies are good thing is, is kind of uh, debatable and a lot of it's gonna be based on your personal preferences and experiences and also how much money you have to spend on seeds. The first category of seed companies I'd like to talk about are the big box seed companies. Those are the seeds that you're gonna find at Lowe's and Home Depot and Fred Meyer or the end cap of the grocery store. I often will buy these as an impulse purchase. I'm not gonna lie. I impulse purchase seeds all the time. Um, the thing about these seeds is that they're going to be more affordable um, because they are kind of mass produced. Uh, it is debatable whether or not they uh, produce inferior plants because they are more affordable, but some people might say they do and question their um, GMO status, I don't know. Um, locally, we've got Ed Hume, he was a local dude. He uh, has written books, he's been a great contribution to the horticulture community here and I like him so I usually will buy Ed Hume seeds if I'm impulse purchasing. Lily Miller is also a pretty good seed. Um, both Ed Hume and Lily Miller have good seed packets and we'll all explain what makes a good seed packet later. Um, Burpee is one, I think Burpee is nationwide and their seed packets leave something to be desired. I'll tell you why again in a little bit. Um, but obviously I've bought them and they've produced, you know, what they've produced. Uh, the other category of uh, seeds to talk about are the boutique seeds. The boutique seeds are seeds that you might find in like an upper scale gardening center. Uh, locally, it would be like a Mulbacks or a Flower World or a um, McAuliffe's in the Snohomish County, McAuliffe's Valley Nursery, I think. I like them, you should check them out. Um, but they will sell what are called like kind of boutique seeds. They are more expensive. Um, they are almost guaranteed to be non-GMO seeds. Uh, they're grown in smaller quantities, which, you know, you would argue would make them higher quality. Um, I use them. I can't, I'm not going to lie. Partly because they come in very interesting varieties. When you've been gardening for a while, you get bored. It's like, you can't just grow a tomato. You have to grow heirloom tomatoes and your heirloom vegetables are definitely going to be found in the boutique, boutique seeds. Oh, and they all have such lovely packaging. So Renee's garden is one I use. Seeds of change also produce starts and we'll talk about what starts are later. Um, but look at the tan. Look how cute is that? It makes you happy, right? And that is a fine looking, oops, sorry, a fine looking broccoli picture. I'm just like, I love the packages and I'm a big sucker for a, a pretty seed packet. But all of these seed packets have a good um, amount of information about the plant, except for the seeds of change one. So, um, but Renee's Garden and Botanical Interests are ones that I use quite a bit. But the seed company I use the most is Territorial Seed Company. And if I haven't sold you on a Territorial Seed Company seeds by the time we're done, then I have failed. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Territorial Seeds and we'll take a look at their seed packets now. Okay, so we're gonna start with this tomato. It's a Candyland Red, which is a cherry tomato effectively. Uh, it's by the Territorial Seed Company. Um, Territorial does not put pictures of the actual plants on their packets. They do like a generic plant for the plant family. Um, but they have these beautiful illustrations and the illustrations on their, uh, the seed catalog covers are gorgeous. But anyway, I digress. Um, I really like that Territorial puts a good description of this plant on it. It, uh, 
describes the flavor, and it kind of describes the uh, nature of the plant, like how it says in the last par or last sentence that it tends to set its fruit on the outside of the plant for easy access, which is great. That's a good thing to know. Um, you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, this 55 days, uh, it might be obvious in some cases what that is, but either way, we're going to come back to it because I think we need to cover some other information first. Let's go to the back of the packet now, and we'll start from the top. You'll see that up here on top, it says packed for 2020. That's good information to have because seeds are usually only good for two to three years. Uh, once we hit that fourth year, we'll probably want to get new seeds if we haven't used them up already. Then we'll go down to the bar of information and we'll start with seed depth. It says one quarter inch here, which means you want to plant the seed one quarter inch below the surface of the soil. Next, we'll look at the boxes entitled soil temp for germination and days to germination. So the temperature needs to reach a specific soil for these seeds to open up and allow the roots and the plants to come up. That is called germination. When the plant sets roots and starts to send up a, t a stem, that's germination. And the number of days to germination is the number of days between the day you put that seed in the soil and you soak it with water to the day you see the sprout come up. That is days to germination. Now let's talk about thin plants too. This is a very important thing to understand. So when it says thin plants too, this means that this is how much space you need in between plants. So this particular plant says 18 to 36 inches. So that means between every tomato plant in either direction, there needs to be one and a half to three feet of space. Next week, when I talk about my tomato garden, I'll help this make more sense to you. You can see it more visually. Now let's talk about sowing indoors versus sowing outdoors. Sowing indoors means that you're growing it inside, uh, inside your home or inside a greenhouse where the temperature is warm enough for the seeds to germinate. So in this case, the temperature can get to 70 to 90 degrees. This one says to start seeds six to eight weeks before anticipated transplant date. So I will talk about what a transplant is in just a little bit. And then it gives instructions on how to take care of your seed indoors. It does not recommend sowing outdoors. There's a reason for that. In most areas of the United States, by the time the soil is warm enough for the seed to generate, the plant won't have enough time to fully come to harvest. So we start them early inside so that we can get a harvest in mid to late summer. The rest of the information on the packet, the growing tips, fertilization tips, and seed specs are all going to vary by the plant that you have. Next week, I'll talk a little bit about ro floating roll covers, mulches, and season extenders because those are important for things like tomatoes. So just bear that in mind, we'll talk about it. Uh, fertilization is not something that I'm going to get too much into right now. Maybe I'll produce something later on that could help that out. But in the meanwhile, you've got this great information on this packet right here. Uh, as far as seed specs go, you can see the minimum germination standard is 80%. That means eight out of every 10 seeds that you plant will germinate. And the seed life is three years. That's about average. Okay, now let's go back to the front of the packet up in the corner where it says 55 days. That means 55 days to maturity or 55 days to harvest or when you can first pick food from your plants. Now for tomatoes, that 55 days starts when you put your transplanted tomato into the ground, not from when you plant your seed. Okay, so what is a transplant? A transplant is a plant where the seed has germinated and has grown to the point where it can be moved outdoors. The size of the plant is important in making that decision and the temperature outside will make a difference there. So these plants are tomatoes, these ones here, and you can see that this plant has two different types of leaves. This leaf is what's called a seed leaf and it looks very similar in shape to the seed that was planted here for this tomato. And then there's these leaves, which are its true leaves. So for myself, 
when I am to transfer or transplant a plant outside, I want to make sure that the plant has at least two sets of true leaves. That's just me. Um, for tomatoes, another very important factor is um, the temperature it is outside. So I won't put my tomatoes out until the beginning of May when it is consistently 50 degrees or warmer in the nighttime. So that's what I would consider a tomato transplant. I want to take you over here, look at these um, zucchinis real quick. <laughs> these zucchinis were planted at the same time, but zucchinis are very prolific plants. They grow very quickly. You can see with these, this is the seed leaf. It also, it just looks like a very large version of the seed that was planted. And then these are its true leaves. And you can see that it's got its second set of true leaves coming up. But because of the size and the, um, the, the bulk of this plant, I would be willing to put it outside at this size, but the temperature for me is still too cool. We need to get a little bit warmer and I'll probably hang on to these for another two to three weeks. Okay, I've, I've picked a handful of plants that I'm gonna go over the seed packets with you and show you how I would glean information from these. So this first one is a carrot. Uh, from the front of the pack, it's a good description there. I can tell that it's 55 days to maturity and the plant size is seven to eight inches. That to me is the most important information. On the back side, I can tell the age of the plant by its pack date. So these are new seeds. Looking at that bar, I know that I have to plant the seeds a quarter inch deep. The seed spacing is that I can plant four seeds per inch. Um, that the soil temperature can actually be pretty cool for these plants to germinate between 45 and 85 degrees. That's a huge range. And so this could be considered a cooler crop. You can plant them earlier. Now this is soil temperature is the temperature of the soil. Don't confuse that with the temperature of the air because the soil tends to be warmer than the air. It can um, hold heat for longer periods of time. So yeah, you can use a thermometer to check the soil temperature, but even right now, it's the beginning of April in the Pacific Northwest, it is perfectly fine for you to plant seeds for carrots right now. Um, this shows days to germination is six to 21 days and to thin plants from one to three inches. And now let's talk about what thinning plants means. Okay, what is thinning and why do we do it? Why is it necessary? So thinning is when you have too many seeds that have germinated and sprouted in one space where this cannot sustain that many plants. It just, you know, one of these plants is going to become dominant and you can see that actually happening in this case. This is the plant that's gonna survive. But so why did I plant two seeds in here? Well, first we have the germination rate. So if I put one seed in every pot, there is a good chance that I'd have two empty pots based on an 80% germination rate. So now I know if I plant two seeds in each pot, there's going to be at least one plant per pot. Now with tomato plants, I can thin them by actually digging them up, and I don't wanna do it right now, but you dig them up and very gently pull them apart, and then I could plant these in two separate pots. Now I've done that with these over here, and you can see these are the same age as these, but because I have given them their own pots and I've also fertilized them, they've gotten much bigger. So, and the same will happen for these. So I will take these apart soon and put them in their own pots. Um, but there are certain plants that you can't do that with. Now, I don't have an example of it right now, but um, a lot of root vegetables like carrots um, are, you can't really uh, thin them by pulling them up the roots apart and replanting them. So for carrots, what I would do is I would choose what I thought to be the puniest of the two and thin them by cutting. So I would actually cut that plant off because yeah, root vegetables, if you pull the root up and then you replant it, it just does not work the same way as it would with like a tomato or a zucchini. So I've got two zucchinis coming up here and all these will eventually get their own pots. I've got some peppers. These are little peppers. Um, these are cabbages. These need to be, uh, this one might get pulled up, but these need to be, I'm just going to put these straight into the ground here in the next uh, week or so, because these are cooler crops. They can stand being outside better um, at this temperature. And uh, 
yeah. Oh, here, one more thing I'll show you. And look at these, I've got some uh, snap peas growing. These were grown at the same time. They were planted at the same time as my tomatoes, but snap peas grow very quickly, which makes them great. I mean, they will produce peas very quickly and everybody loves that. So anyway, there's a little couple looking at some plants in there. Where it says to sow outdoors, it gives you dates, which are really great. So you know from mid-March until mid-July, uh, you can grow your carrots. And it also says that the carrots will are slow to, and erratic to germinate, which is very accurate. Um, you can plant a row of carrots, or I've had the experience where, you know, a couple come up right away, and then a couple more come up a week later, and then a couple up, you know, and then and sometimes it takes in my experience, longer than 21 days for the carrots to germinate. Then we have this great growing tip. It says till or spade the bed deeply, 12 to 16 inches, to allow roots to elongate and develop to their full size. So if the ground that you're planting your carrots on is too solid, you're, it'll stunt the growth of your carrots. They need to be able to grow to at least, this one is seven to eight inches, um, but it also will have a tap root, which is just a long skinny root. You can see it in the drawings of the um, carrots there that will go down much further than seven to eight inches. So it's important to make sure that your soil is loose and that your plant has the ability to grow very deeply. There's also good fertilization information um, and the, uh, the insect prevention is also really great information. Next week, I will talk about um, the uh, floating row covers, um, so you'll get that information. And then obviously there's these seed specs. Uh, and you know, the 75% germination rate is good to know because you know, when you start looking, you're like, wow, I thought I planted way more seeds. Well, yeah, you did. You planted 25% more seeds than what actually came up. And it also says here that the seed life is three years. So in 2023, I might be the, you know, as time goes by, the seeds become less and less likely to germinate. So that germination, germination rate goes down as the seeds get older. All right, let's take a look at this cucumber. What's the first thing I notice on the front of this packet? Well, I noticed the 51 days to harvest because I like plants that are able to harvest quickly. That means you're going to get more out of them in a uh, growing season, which is great. Uh, it's also a big plant, uh, 12 to 13 inches is a nice big cucumber. Um, what I noticed from the back is it was packed in 2020. It's a brand new plant or brand new packet. Um, the seed planting depth is half an inch, mostly because it's a very large seed. Um, seed spacing, and then you also see over the thin plants too, refers to hills. I don't grow mine in hills. Um, I grow mine up trellises, uh, something I'll talk about next week. So the seed spacing I usually do is, um, like nine to 12 inches between each plant because they get pretty big. 12 inches is probably for this one because it produces such large plants, um, large fruits that it's, uh, I would put them at least that far apart. These cucumbers can be sown indoors and it says to do it three to seven, seven weeks prior to the anticipated transplant date. Now I do want to stop here and talk about transplanting cucumbers really quick. Cucumbers are a plant that are susceptible to root shock. So let's take a second and talk about root shock. Okay, so for plants that don't like to be transplanted or are susceptible to root shock, you can get these peat pots. And what you do is you plant your seeds directly in them. They germinate in the warm temperatures of your house or your greenhouse. You let them grow a little bit until they're ready to be transplanted. So they've got for me, it would be for me, I'd do at least two sets of true leaves. We talked about that earlier. And instead of taking it out of the pot to put it into the ground, you just bury the whole pot and it will decompose as it gets wetter and wetter. And therefore the roots don't get disturbed when it gets planted. It, they, you know, they're able to just kind of do their thing in place. Um, the only thing about these is that you need to make sure that for the first couple of weeks, those plants stay very wet because if this stops decomposing, it will cause uh, the roots to kind of bind up on themselves and you'll have a root bound plant and that won't be as a successful plant. So there's that. Okay, so it says you can uh, sow your cucumbers outdoors. Um, 
the soil temperature above says 65 to 90 degrees for germination, but this says you want to wait until it's at least 60 degrees um, to avoid cool weather that will be co conducive to powdery mildew. And I'll talk about powdery mildew a little bit next week because that's kind of a big deal here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and then it, again, it talks about the spacing of hills. I, I don't do hills, so there's that. Um, mulches and roll covers we'll talk about. It gives good fertilization information. Um, and the insect prevention is something we'll talk about as well. Butternut squash is one of my favorites. It is a winter squash, meaning that it is, uh, it usually has a very long days to harvest time. You can see 105 to 110 days is twice as much as the cucumber. Um, and it's just the way it is. They're bigger, they're meatier. They just take longer to grow and, and ripen. They usually ripen in the fall. Um, and that's why they're associated with fall. Great thing about winter squashes is that they keep well. So um, there's something that you can harvest in the fall and, and hang on to for quite some time, depending on how you store it. It could, you know, potentially store for months, which is what makes it kind of a good uh, crop for having winter food. Um, let's see, what else did we see from this packet? The seed depth there is one and a half to one to one and a half inches deep. Also, they're big, nice, big seeds. They're also grown on hills. I grow mine on um, a trellis. I'll show you that trellis next week, and I can grow a lot of food on that trellis. Um, five to 10 days to germinate. Uh, soil temperatures a little bit on the warmer side, but once the, they germinate, they can tolerate cooler temperatures because they do grow into the fall. Um, you can grow them outdoors. I've had a lot of success with, with planting them both inside and outside. And I usually do both because that creates what's called a succession crop. And I will talk about succession crops next time. Um, you, so here it says with the growing tips that you do need to bear in mind that these are pollinated plants. So they need, um, uh, a male and a female flower and that's how they produce fruit they need pollinators um, there's ways to pollinate your plants um, by hand uh, that's definitely not something I'm getting into right now but understand that you know that these plants will need to be pollinated in order to produce fruit there's some good fertilization information um, yeah it looks the the standard seed life is a little bit longer it's three to four years for this uh, winter squash they tend to be hardy plants. They produce hardy seeds. Okay, so here we have an arugula. And I'm just gonna use this as an example for a, a leafy green because most leafy greens grow very similarly, except for kale, but uh, arugulas and, and lettuces are, are gonna kind of look the same. But arugulas, it's a, it's a little spicy green. Mm, it's delicious, anyway. Um, so what do I get from looking at this packet? It's a very quick time from seed to harvest. So this is a direct uh, sow plant for the most part. You can start them indoors. There's information about that we'll talk about in a second. Um, but these these you consider from the time you put them in the dirt uh, until the time they are harvestable uh, is 30 to 40 days. That's really quick. Um, Contrary to what you might think, when you harvest leafy greens, you don't necessarily pull up the whole plant. You just start cutting off the outer plants. And as long as it doesn't get warm enough or the circumstances don't arise so that that plant wants to go to seed, which is a whole video onto itself, I suppose, um, that plant will continue to produce leaves for quite some time. So that's one of the things that makes leafy greens real great is that you can just keep cutting off the leaves and making yourself one salad at a time and that plant will keep producing for a long period of time. Okay, um, what do we see? Their uh, seed depth is one quarter to one half inch. They are very small seeds. Talk about seed spacing below, um, 50 to 70 degrees for uh, germination. So uh, it's a cooler on the cooler end of the germination scale. So you could probably put your seeds out for arugula right now. Um, two to 15 days, days to germination, and then you thin plants, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, every six to 12 inches. So uh, sowing indoors, <laughs> I always laugh when I see that they put the seed, the sterile seed mix. 
hardcore gardeners use sterile seed mix. I just use dirt. Um, I, maybe that affects how well my plants come out, but they're, they're fine. Um, and so it gives you instructions there on how to start them indoors and bring them outside. I have some of that happening in my greenhouse now with, um, uh, butter lettuce and romaine. Um, and then it gives you the, the information for sowing outdoors. Um, yeah. And it's, it says under growing tips at the very last sentence. So, so every couple of weeks for a continuous supply of young plants, that's called succession planting. And we'll talk about that. And, uh, yeah, so there's a little, uh, arugula for you. Okay, so this last plant we're going to talk about is a zucchini. I love a zucchini. It's a summer squash as opposed to a winter squash. Its days to harvest are quite a bit faster than the butternut squash we talked about earlier. And so we see it's 50 days. Um, zucchinis are mostly transplanted, so that's 50 days from the transplant date to harvest. You can see on the back there, the seed depth is similar, one to one and a half inches, because it's a big seed. Um, again, I don't use hills, so I looked down where it says sowing outdoors and it says space plants three to five feet apart in a row. Now that is what I would do. Um, I usually do mine about three feet apart. Zucchinis can be very large plants. Um, their soil temp for germination is 65 to 85 degrees, so it's, it, it's in the mid-range. It's not warm, it's not cool, it's kind of a mid-range deal. My zucchinis, I planted these Emerald Delights in my greenhouse. They came up seriously in three days. They were so fast. Um, yeah, these are also plants that are going to require pollination. If you find that you don't have much for pollinators, you might need to look up how to uh, pollinate by hand. This does give um, bee attracting flowers that you can plant. I always have uh, borage in my, in my garden because well, I think it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I think that everybody should be growing zucchini this year because it's a highly prolific plant. And the Snohomish Food Bank says there's no such thing as too much zucchini, but I can grow too much zucchini and now they can have it. So um, there is that. Okay, so why do I choose territorial seeds? Primarily because of the packet. I know that every time I buy seeds from Territorial, they're going to come in a packet that's going to give me all of the information I need to successfully grow that plant. So that's a primary reason. Uh, another reason is my experience with them um, is that they usually perform better than expected. So uh, this year I grew tomatoes. I grew, so far I've grown four varieties of their tomatoes and I've gotten 100% germination rate on all but one of them and that one was 90 percent and what they say you could expect is 80 percent so I got better than what they said I could expect and that has been my experience with them for years um, I also know from experience that they cre create um, the seeds produce healthy strong plants that are productive um, and consistent so it's not like I plant seeds I get four come up and one of them is good and the other one isn't. I mean, they're all very consistent, very productive, very healthy plants. Um, another reason I choose them is because their website has got a ton of really good information and it's um, very user friendly and I like that. I think that it's generous of them to, to create that information. A lot of seed companies do have that on their website. So, I mean, not just territorial, many seed companies websites can be a wealth of information for you but I like territorials and um, I like the customer service. One time I had a $120 order that didn't show up and I was like, well, you know, the delivery thing says it showed up and I didn't get it. And they were like, okay, well, we'll send you more, $120 more. Well, it turns out a couple months later, I found out that that package had been stolen and I'm sure whoever stole it, that young lady, I know she got caught was like, to do with a hundred she probably thought it was just crap she didn't realize a hundred and twenty dollars worth of seeds but i digress i say that to say their uh customer service just was like all right you say you didn't get it here's more <laughs> so anyway so that's why i choose them but there are plenty of other really good seed companies out there feel free to explore and have fun and just you know make note when you use them like oh i planted four seeds and only one came up or 
oh, when I use that, their plants are kind of puny, or oh my god, their plants are huge and luscious. So just think for yourself and figure it out, but if you don't want to do that, then you should just use Territorial. <laughs> okay, so now you've got all that information about seeds. You may be thinking, I don't have any place to start seeds. Okay, the things that you can sow outdoors to begin with, like, you know, the lettuces and the carrots and root vegetables, that's great. You just put them outdoors, but maybe you don't have a place to start your tomatoes. That's fine. You can buy starts. Um, the thing that you have to become concerned about when you buy starts is who are you buying these starts from? Because seeds, generally, if they're non-GMO, they're going to produce a nutritious, chemical-free plant. If they have been started by another company, you don't know what they've put in their uh, fertilizers. You don't know what kind of pesticides that they've used because greenhouses can be a, uh, a petri dish of bugs and pests and molds and all kinds of stuff. So um, that's something to take into consideration. So you want to look for things that are organic. You you know if you can buy from probably the boutique shops are going to have nicer uh, starts or healthier, more organic, things of that nature. So that's just something to keep in mind. But it definitely, if you can't start seeds of, of your own, just get starts. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, well, I think that's enough information for one day. Here is all of what you know now. So you figured out what your motivation is, what your goals are. You've taken a look at what your available land resources are. Now you have a good idea of what you want to plant and you can start to think about how much space am I gonna need for that? How many tomato plants do I want? How many cucumber plants do I want? How many of this or that or the other thing? And now you can start to determine either how much space you need or given the space you have, what can you grow? So you've got the information to figure that out um, next week, I'm going to talk about more about where do you, you know the containers for your your garden, uh, raised beds versus containers versus straight in the soil. Uh, I'm going to talk about some other things related to growing um, row covers, uh, season extenders, and mulches, um, uh, supports for your plants. That kind of the structural information that you need to plan around. Uh, so that's coming up next week. If you have uh, questions, please post them below. Um, otherwise, I hope everybody's doing good. So far, we're all hanging in there. It is, it is, it shocks me. I'm an introvert and I love to be alone until I have to be alone. And now I'm like, oh God. <sighs> anyway, I hope you guys are all doing good. I hope your families are staying safe and healthy. Again, if you're staying inside, thank you for staying inside. If you're not, then you should. Okay, take care. We'll talk to you soon.